All right. Cool. Okay. All right. We are good. It's recording. So what's up, Sandra? How are you today? Not much. Good. Just enjoying the cool California weather <laughs> compared to Las Vegas. This feels so nice. <laughs> well, you're still in California? Yeah, I'm still here for a couple more days. So it's a lot warmer than Vegas, but it's it's still pretty nice. It's bearable. Oh, that's nice. Is Vegas like hotter or more dry? In the summer, yeah, it's a lot hotter. It's a lot more dry. Um, right now, I think we're about maybe five degrees difference. So it's a little bit warmer here in California than it is in Vegas. Um, so you can still go outside with, you know, leggings and a light sweater. Whereas in Vegas, it's a little bit windy, a little bit colder. So yeah, you have I mean, to like I'll bundle up. Virginia, because it's like 30 degrees outside. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm like so jelly right now. <laughs> oh but, yeah but, but yeah that's great okay well let's just get started um so you want to tell us a little bit about yourself yeah so I'm Sandra and I have a brand it's more of me co and it's really focused on, on just putting moms first that's um where the name comes if you if you think of it it's just mom <laughs> so I, I yeah um that's one of the things that really worked for me just putting myself first and really asking myself what you know what I wanted as an individual apart from my mom role and that's kind of how I came up with the name and the brand itself and I have a four-year-old I've been married yeah yeah <laughs> I have a four-year-old and I've been married for um almost 11 years now yeah we're going in on 11 years in February um and I I decided to go full-time entrepreneur about a year and a half ago after quitting my job of 15 years with a government entity and yeah I'm, I'm doing bold. it is <laughs> I know it was right. freaking scary yeah it's, it's bold it's very courageous to do that yeah, it took a while, not gonna lie. It took a couple years for me to get in the right mindset to actually go for it. But I I wish I would have done it sooner now that I look back. That's amazing. Isn't it awesome? Like the scariest things you're like, I don't know if I should do it. And then when you just go in, you're like, Oh my god, why didn't I do this like 10 years ago? <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's, that's freaking awesome. I mean, I remember you talking to me when I first became a mom and like just thinking about all those introspective questions about being a mom was just so helpful because I was like yeah this is like these are things I don't really think about but I'm so glad like Sandra asked me about my day as a mom like do I get to do things that I personally love you know I I think this is something that so many moms definitely need um, yeah yeah so Definitely. So, mm -hmm. so yeah being a mom already is challenging but what are like some things that you know you see like a lot of mistakes or something you see that moms do that you're like we don't need to do this um I think that one of the things that's just societal you know we grow up kind of hearing it over and over again and even seeing it in movies is that we always put our kids first and we depend on our kids to be our happiness and to fill us up right it, yeah and it kind of it's a little so bit like yeah. yeah it's a little bit like well the thing that drains your cup can't also really fill your cup all the time like you have to find ways to fill your cup that don't just have to do with your kids and then what happens, you know, in 18 years, 20 years, or however many years when the kids leave the nest, and then you're left with yourself, or your partner, you know, if you're married, and you don't even know who you are, what you want to do, because your sole identity is tied to your kids, and now they're gone. And now you don't know what to do with yourself. So I think that's one of the things that I've noticed that a lot of um, mothers tend to do. And once they're older, uh, and, and I, because I saw that with my mother-in-law and especially with like the older moms, I, I realized that 
you know, the root of the problem comes from ever since we're little kids, when we hear it like, oh, you're such a, you're so nurturing, you're so good and always give to others. You're such a good girl, put others first. And we tend to do that when we become mothers, we tend to over give to a point where we we're just completely drained and we don't have anything for ourselves. We don't have anything for our partners. And that's really where I see depression come in in motherhood and even relationship problems come in because, you know, your kids are your whole life. But the reality is that they can't be because there are so many parts of ourselves that that it's not just motherhood. So being a really good mom is actually not good. (laughs) <laughs> right but I'm like obviously you want to be a good mom you're there but being the good girl the good mom right is it's like look like even I got it right even I'm like oh my god Sina, you're so good you give her so much attention and you like take care of her all the time and I'm like but I want time for myself to go do things that I like like I don't want to do kid activities all day you know yeah. so even like what you're saying when I added more things like that adult activities into my day I felt like okay now I can be more present with her and not be like oh my god I have to do another play time (laughs) I just schedule another play date for her you know so it was just it's just different yeah definitely yeah outwardly like you said outwardly being a good mom isn't like from everybody seeing it from the outside in being a good mom isn't really good for your mental health and for your overall health, you know, as a person, because yeah, you're giving all of your attention, all of your time, all of your energy to this little being. And to be honest with you, like they don't always need it. They do need that independence. They need to learn how to figure things on their own. They need a little bit of that struggle to build their character as they're growing up. And, you know, they always tell us like, make sure you're you're taking care of the kid. And if you're not taking care of, of the kid and he's out in the other room, then you're neglecting him. And so it's hard, you know, to be a good mom in the eyes of others and feel like a good mom yourself um, when you're completely drained. So, yeah, <laughs> I hear what you're saying. I totally agree. And going back to, like, putting your kid first, like, giving making that your identity as just a mom, like, I see it in, like, my family all the time even my mom like I remember when I went to college and then got married and moved away for so many like years she was just like lost like now what do I do I'm not a mother but like it was just so hard for her to like you know lose that identity and find Mm -hmm. herself and what are some ways that people or moms can like you know, what are some things that they can do to help with that? So really just finding time to get a little bit of peace and quiet, because I heard someone say that God uh, whispers, you know, so you can't hear the whispers if you're in the middle of the noise. So (laughs) you have to find a time and whether it's in the shower, whether you're in the bathroom, um, before you go to sleep, Whenever you can find those pockets of silence, really, you know, instead of reaching for your phone and reaching for more stimulation, like turning on the TV, it's really just asking yourself those inner questions of what do I want? And, you know, if today I don't feel like it was a good day, why why wasn't it a good day? And then what would I want it to look like in order for it to be a good day? Because we always focus on the negative, but then we kind of just sit there. And we don't then look at, okay, what's the solution? What could be better? We don't look at the possibilities when we're stuck in, you know, all of our, I don't like this and I hate how this is going. And, and, and it's just that, you know, never ending loop. So if we can just get ourselves out of it, like, okay, it was a bad day, but how can it be better tomorrow? Or how can it be better in the future? What do I really want? What really lights me up? You know what? What do I enjoy doing, whether that's having your coffee in the morning in silence and then deciding that, you know, you're going to start waking up 10 minutes earlier or whether you really light up when you're around other women and then you schedule in a 
brunch with the girls and they don't have to be other moms they can just be you know old friends or new friends or maybe it's exercising you know and then finally just deciding okay well I'm gonna cut back on you know Netflix or Disney plus and I'm gonna invest those thirty dollars and I'm gonna go sign up for the local gym and put my child in daycare while I go fill up my cup at the gym so so not just focusing on the problem, but also then asking yourself, what's the solution? How can I make this better? And you do that, like I said, in those moments of silence. I, I agree. It's very important to like have friends that you can go to that's not family, you know, and just kind of like be yourself. <laughs> yeah. I love yeah, it. Yeah, that's, so yeah, that's what helps me is being around other people being social really I've found lately that makes me I don't know it just like it energizes me in a different way yeah it's just like like you feel like more empowered to like okay wow I feel good like this part of me is full so now I can go fill up the other parts of me <laughs> um, okay so what if like someone yeah no they need to do this like like they're just like oh I'm just a mom you know I take care of my kid how would they recognize like that they need time for themselves what are some things you see like what are some signs that they can look for um so your emotions are always like your red flags if you're feeling depressed if you're feeling angry if you're feeling irritated that's a sign that something isn't going right. It's not just part of mom life. We have to stop normalizing that feeling irritated, angry, depressed, all of that is, you know, hormones. We need wow. to stop telling women that. Yeah. And really, um, instead of being like, okay, you, you know, you're just tired and, and that's why you're irritable. Or maybe it's that time of the month and that's why you're feeling that way. Like, let's stop with all of that. And let's just yeah. really get honest with ourselves, right? And be like, okay, I feel irritated because I'm stuck at home all the time. I don't talk to anybody. My only conversations are with four year olds. And I really need to get out of the house and I need to start moving my body or eating healthier or whatever it is, right? So that's really going to be your first sign is going to be your emotions. If you don't feel good, there is something underlying that you need to start looking at to to bring up like what is really causing this negative emotion and once you have that like once you keep asking yourself like why and getting deeper and deeper and deeper then you're gonna start to then you're gonna start to really get to it it's like a it's like an onion you have to peel it back in layers 100 percent, 100 percent. so what are like things that you notice yourself doing like, what's an example that you can give that if you haven't put yourself first, what's something you're like, oh, my God, wait, I'm acting this way. I need to go do this. So what is it? What is it that you do? So for me, I start noticing, like, I'll get a little bit of resentful with, like, my daughter, with the little things that I have to do. Like, oh, I have to cook for her or, oh, I have to, like, you know, play with her or whatever. And that's when I start to realize, okay, I need to get out of the house. I need to find time for myself you know because I know that I thrive and I and I really just um like fill my battery up back uh, back up when I'm by myself or when I when I spend that time by myself and then I go and I get to socialize and I get to talk to the girls and have conversations about you know anything and that's when I notice when I start to get a little bit resentful a little irritable I'm like, I tell my husband, hey, can, you know, can you like watch my daughter on, on this day or when, what's your schedule going to be like? Um, and he's always, you know, he's a very hands on. And so I just let him know, like this day I scheduled time with the girls, like, you know, it's you and uh, daddy and daughter time, like go do your thing because <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> exactly. um, that is our constant like scheduling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> today I'm like hey mom are you home okay we're coming over <laughs> yeah um, but it's it's like yeah I totally agree with you because even for me in the past like couple of months I've been more aware of when feelings come up within me of just like 
oh, I don't want to read this book with you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I do like reading books with my daughter, but some days you're just like, I don't want to do this. Like, this is annoying me. This is really not something I am happy to do right now. And in yeah. that moment, I'm like, okay, for me personally, I usually go to the gym and I work out and I just feel amazing. Right. And then I come home and I'm like, all right, let's read all those books. <laughs> and it's amazing. And exactly. I think just taking like, like, even in that moment, you could just be like, hey, I'm going to go right now, go work out, go for a walk, go for meditation and, and then come back. And it's just, it just, it's a world of a difference, Sandra. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Um, so is there anything else you want to share about your pro? You have a new program coming up. Um, you want to share anything about our moms that can, you know, benefit from this? What are they going to? Yeah. See? So I have a, I'm building right now um, my motherhood 2.0 program, awesome. which is going to be, yeah, it's going to be running um, on its own. Once I finish uh, after the six weeks of working with these beta students in January, we're going to work six weeks together and we're going to be building it in real time. So I'm going to be listening to moms and their needs and what they want to learn more about and really just catering this six week program to what they tell me so that future moms can benefit from everything that we learn together. And it's really about focusing on you as an individual, as a mother, you know, and to take your motherhood your mom life to the next level because like I said you know we've all been buying this lie that our kids are going to make us happy and they're you know becoming a mom is like the end all be all and it's gonna make be so blissful but the truth is that if you don't work on yourself if you don't put yourself first if you don't know who you are as an individual you're not going to be that happy present mom so that's what the program is really about like showing moms that you're worth putting yourself on the priority list and that you have to have a healthy relationship with yourself in order to be that happy mom, you know, that's going to raise happy, healthy kids. And also just giving them the confidence of mothering on their own terms. Everybody's mom life is going to look completely different. And that's because we all have different values. We all have different backgrounds. We all grew up differently. And you know, now we kind of get to decide and pick and choose, you know, I want to use this, I, I don't want to use that, you know, this isn't working for me. And building your own mom life, you know, making it look the way that you want in your terms that makes you happy and, and, you know, allows you to really embrace all of it without any guilt or without any shame. And people can say whatever they want to say, because there's always going to be opinions but you're going to be so confident in your motherhood and as yourself as an individual that what they say is not going to matter because you know who you are, you know, you're, you're grounded. And that's ultimately like what I want for every single mom out there. That's beautiful. Yeah. So is your program yeah. open right now to enroll in? Yeah. So I, um, I have it enrolled until the end of December because we're starting in January of 2023. And nice. after the six weeks, then I'll open it again. And yeah, so it's just going to be an ongoing program, but yeah, if anybody's interested in enrolling and if you're listening to this in December, then I'm still taking students at this moment. That is so exciting. That's so exciting. Yes. You're, you know, along with doing your own business and being a mom and, you know, finding time to do things for yourself. What, how do you fit like doing a business into that? I, you know what? I, I have, I had my own coach for a while and I really learned to um, become aware of my masculine and my feminine energy and when I was in either or and for the longest time I was in my masculine mm -hmm. so I hustled I had to work hard I had to do 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 plan 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 that was my like I just thought I was type a forever and ever and then when I worked with her I really got to know my feminine energy and I was really in flow and 
and I got to just allow things to happen. And if I felt like it and I realized that wasn't working for me. And so I started to find a balance in between the two. So I know that if I wake up early, I can get stuff done and then be in my masculine, you know, like waking up early, getting my coffee, getting my work stuff done. And then once my daughter wakes up, then I can be in my feminine where I'm just kind of going with the flow. And if she's eating breakfast and quiet, then I can do a little bit more work. And if not, then it's okay. And then when she goes to school, then I'm back in my masculine where I'm like, okay, let's go. Let's focus on on this work. And then when she comes back from school, it's again in my feminine, but it took time, you know, and it took somebody else helping me through the process to really get to see and to help me um, kind of go back and forth between the two. And then um, it just took me realizing that either I was too in the hustle or I was too in the flow um, and seeing that it wasn't working for me and accepting that and adjusting, you know, because a lot of us just feel like, oh, I'm failing and I'm not doing it right or I'm not going fast enough. But the truth is that, you know, just failing and it not working is just another way for it's, it's another sign for you to adjust and pivot and try something different and that's what I do all the time (laughs) it's just that thing didn't work so you adjust Mm -hmm. yeah and that's what I have to do especially with kids you know that you know you have to adjust constantly because their schedule changes as they grow their attitude changes their mood everything changes so you know being in that flexible feminine masculine flow like it just it's like it, it has to be something that you have to embrace as a mother, especially if you're running a business. It's too. never like a crazy. I I think of it as like a harmony. Like sometimes we're doing more feminine than masculine, or there's like days where you're just like mostly masculine, and then mm-hmm. it balances out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing, Sandra. Um, I think that's all for today. Um, but thank you so much for coming today and recording with me I appreciate you so much thank you for inviting me (laughs) thanks for taking your time out of your busy schedule to do this I appreciate it and yeah no of course thank you so much for allowing me to talk about this and to bring awareness to you know any mother out there that may be thinking that okay this is just mom life and this is how it is because it's, it's not, you know, you can change it. You have the power to change it. Exactly. I totally agree because if there's something that you don't like about your day, even if you're a mom, even if you're like whatever, right? You can literally change it in that mm-hmm. moment. And that's like, yeah. so I love that. Yes. And I wish like we would have known all of this when we were little girls and now that we're mothers, but you know, right. everything happens for a reason. Like, <laughs> I, I agree there needs to be like a motherhood school right which is like what you're teaching to teach like mm-hmm. all these new changes that happen through pregnancy and even after you're just not gonna go back to being that same person like you're just you can't so yeah evolve into this new being yes yes it's that 2.0 version of yourself <laughs> Exactly. Oh, I love it. I love that. Yeah, I was going to ask, what is 2.0? <laughs> yeah, it's just that it's that up level, you know, like, you, you, you've you accepted this, this life, this role, and you're like, nope, you know, I don't like it. It's not going to be like this forever. And then you just decide like, okay, I have to create a new version of it. And that's what it is. You know, it's the 2.0 version. So you keep going and and as you as you learn, you grow and and you just keep evolving. And that's what it is. It's the evolved version of your first version of motherhood. <laughs> oh my God. And and it's crazy. I recently like learned or heard a podcast which was talking about how motherhood, like, you know how we grow up and we go through adolescence. So there's like a period of matrescence, which is like how your brain develops and changes through hormones and everything um, through motherhood and that's called matrescence and apparently this happens every time you have a kid there's like a new level that's like unlocked 
in like a motherhood and I'm just like that is such a cool way to think about it because that's literally what happens and you know like when you go through adolescence life is pretty crazy there's so many things that are happening you know and Mm -hmm. if we had better coaches during adolescence to teach us how to navigate our emotions and how to navigate that time in our life I feel like we all grew up to be such a great empowered human beings because that is a very very like insecure time you know yes Mm -hmm. yeah I agree definitely if we can have more emotional awareness um in the schools you know it's so that they can help us how to process our emotions and to really embrace you know our negative emotions and be able to to see them for what they are then you know I think we would be healthier humans (laughs) overall and even to motherhood like not much is taught during you know pregnancy and everything speaking from my experience um I I actually signed up with a doula um Mm -hmm. what is it called when you don't go for a hospital birth but then you go for like a what is that called I'm like trying to blank um, right now. Um, like a home birth? birth? Right. But at this place, not at home. Mm, mm-hmm. And and because I went through this um, birthing place, <laughs> and that's the best I can come up with right now, but I went through this birthing place and they really helped me like understand and like we had like monthly calls on how your brain is developing through motherhood, the questions to ask yourself, how to prepare for birth through like mentally and emotionally and like physically what's going to happen, right? So when I went into mm-hmm. my actual pregnancy, like when my actual like labor birthday, wow, <laughs> um, I was like so prepared. I was like, okay, I'm in this period of my birth. Like now I'm at this period. And I feel like if I were to go, like, a traditional route, those things wouldn't be, like, taught to me, you know? And Mm -hmm. I think it's just very important to have other resources to learn. Yeah. During that time, like, which is, like, a huge major life change for women. It's crazy. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And we should make that the norm, you know, not the exception, not, not like, oh, I have to go find a birthing center that's going to help me with all of this it should already be part of the hospital you know something that they offer all over yeah for all mothers yeah and then even afterwards like they they still taught me things up until like three to four months into my like until my daughter was born like they still caught up like you know said we had our weekly calls and we still like did our started monthly calls and it's like now you're expected to like your kids should be doing this if they're not doing this tell us this right whereas I feel like you go to the hospital and you're like all right you're a baby bye yeah <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, right. that's how I felt too yeah it's like they give you they tell you that this is the most precious thing in the world and then they allow you to go home with no information whatsoever on what you're supposed to do next I mean all they really focus on is is the kid latching on and you know that's it that's that's pretty much it you know they don't focus on you emotionally what do you do next nothing and so I think that's that's a disservice that we're doing to mothers you know in general because hey we're right we're raising the the next generation so I'm like can we get a little bit more help over here (laughs) I know right it's like okay I didn't just buy like you know a machine like I have a human being I have to raise (laughs) like yeah yeah crazy I I think you get more preparation when you buy a Tesla than when when you become a mother (laughs) which is so sad (laughs) like (laughs) yeah yeah like when you have that newborn, that time, like, can be so isolating, you know, like, so what can, like, a mom do during that initial, like, three to six months of, like, newborn time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you have, like, if you're pregnant right now, and you're listening, this is when it starts, like, you have to build your A-team, Uh, this is something I wish that I would have done. I wish I would have gotten like friends, family, neighbors, 
and really just um, understood like their uh, strengths and been like, okay, you're really good. Like, can you just bring me coffee one week or can you bring me a meal? Um, and really just not being afraid to ask for help, you know, as a, as a person, as a mom. And then if you have a newborn, you can still do that. You can still reach out to your mom, your neighbor, a friend, there are so many Facebook mom groups out there right now with so many women who are willing to help out strangers. And, you know, if you have groceries or if you need a meal, whatever it is that you need, maybe you just need some laundry done, take the help, you know, just, yes, I will take it. If there's anybody out there that is willing to come and help me, you know, there's no shame in asking for help. There's no shame in taking the help. And if they don't do it the way that you would do it, it's okay. I think that just allowing it to be done instead of perfect is going to give you so much more peace than if you try to do everything yourself. Um, and like you said, it's very isolating when you're a new mom. Yeah. And that actually has mental, you know, like it, there are mental, um, um, oh my gosh, I can't think of the word, but there, you know, you can get depression. Yeah. Depression. I mean, there's, there's so many things that can happen from isolation itself. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you don't buy into the lie that you have to do this all on your own. There is help out there. It doesn't have to be from your family. If you don't have a good relationship with them, there are really good strangers out there that are willing to help. Like I said, and yeah, wherever you can get the help, take it. Yeah. I remember like, I had to go into like a, a an immediate like delivery like I wasn't due for like another two weeks so I was like oh I'm chilling and then all of a sudden my doctor's like okay you can't, you have to come in like tonight and we have to deliver and I was like wait a minute like what <laughs> I'm not ready <laughs> like my hospital bag's not packed you know nor nor did I and I and yeah. I wanted to have and I didn't have either one so I was like and my family wasn't there like I was in Austin. And I was like, I called my husband. I'm like, hey, I have to go. And we're having a baby tomorrow morning. Like, this is so <laughs> immediate. And like, in that moment, I felt so excited. Like, oh, my God, I'm going to have a baby. But also, like, terrified. Like, wait, no one's here. Like, my mom's not here. This is, like, not what I planned, right? The At least I wanted a doula. And, mm-hmm. and one of the things that the – and I, immediately I texted my birthday center. And I was like, hey. I'm having a baby tomorrow. Like I need a doula. So they sent me like an organization that literally sends you doulas immediately on demand. And I literally typed in my number and my name and they texted me and they're like, someone's going to be there as soon as you wake up in the morning. And she was there. And, and it's so easy. Like, it's so easy to ask for help. That's not like immediate family. You know, there's so many amazing organizations that are out there. Like you said, that can help just mentally through these type of situations of motherhood, which I yeah, never exactly help with because I was always in like my, oh, I can do it myself, right? But no, like you need help as a mom yeah. and it's okay to take that help. Like that was such yeah. a big limiting belief that I had like, oh, I can do it all my, on my own. But then I was like, I don't have to, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Even better, exactly. Do you have help? Great. Yes. And if you have a partner who's really, you know, hands on and helpful, like definitely lean on him because it's it that helps so much as well, you know, to be able to communicate and to be able to talk about your feelings and everything that you're going through, you know, as a new mom. Um, because that a new baby comes into your world and it definitely shakes up your relationship a bit too. So having someone who is supportive and who's open and listens and helps is, is a big help. Yeah, definitely. I a hundred percent agree. Like partners definitely help a lot. All right, Sandra, I appreciate you really coming on today and thank you so much. I enjoyed talking. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) All right. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.